So I'm going to talk on self-inquiry or um, what I, I sometimes call it, the observer or the witnesser. And how I, how do I do that process? Well, how I do the process, so, um, so I always I always do the process in the same way. So it's like uh, I explain it to others in, in this way. So first of all, uh, because this illuminates the process of self-inquiry. Like if there's a table in the room or any object in the room that you're observing, you've got to notice, uh, you've got to notice the object like the table and 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 let and observe it and then recognize that there's zero confusion that that a table is an object and there's a recognition, there's a spiritual awareness that the table is not you. Now, also, what is the quality of the table? Why is there such clarity? Well, it's a meaningless object. There's no associate, there, there's nothing in you that wants to make it meaningful, uh, that wants to identify with it. So you can either use the word meaningful, but in, in self-inquiry, we use the word more like identification or interest in something. So the table, it's like, there's not really much identification with the table there's not much interest in the table and so it's de there's a detached to witnessing of it and it's got nothing to do with what i am the essence of what i am has got nothing a table i'm not the essence of what i am is witnessing the table and it has no effect on the witnessing the the limited expansive witnessing of the table table does not limit the witnesser in fact the table the limited table has got nothing to do with the witnesser so that's very very clear so what are the things that I have to inquire in? Well, I usually some of the big ones I have to inquire in is, am I a body? Is the body me or is there an observer of the body? So, okay, let's, let's go by a few of the big ones together. All right, the body. Now rec recognize an object, there's something that's aware of how tall and how wide an object is. And if there is like a table, there's a greater witnesser of the table than the limitation of the table. And then there's a recognition that there's a detached observing of the table. Now, the body, you actually recognize that actually there is something here that's witnessing the body. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll try and say this slowly. There's an awareness of how tall and how wide the body is. The body is not infinite. It's not like 70 feet tall. It's not. Something is watching and witnessing, and it knows roughly how big and wide the body is. Aha, got it, you see. There's a witnesser here of the body. Now, is this a detached witnesser, or is it a, what I call a identified one? If there's an identified witnesser, then it will seem very difficult. It will seem like maybe I'm not the witnesser, I'm the body. No, no, I'm definitely the body. There is no witnesser behind the body. But keep looking, keep inquiring. Is there a witnesser of the body here that's not the body? And suddenly it's like, aha, spiritual awakening. Yes, there's a watcher here watching the body. It's just an object. There's just a, uh, And when there's detached observing, it's seen like an absolute phenomenal electrifying spiritual experience. I was never the body. I am that which is behind the body, the witnesser of the body. That's what I am. This body object is just a table. It's got nothing to do with what I am. I'm the silence behind the body. Once you bust that illusion, yeah, um, it's very difficult to ever believe you're a body ever again, because you've seen it with absolute clarity. Like you're not the body. Uh, you, you're that which is the witnesser of the body. I'm not. A t That's why I say it sounds funny. I'm not a table. I'm not, I don't want to be limited to being a table. I'm not the body. I don't want to be limited to being a body. That's what awful distress. Okay. So that's one of the big ones. So inquire, are you a body? Keep inquiring until you get the aha and you recognize the witnesser behind the body. And then it becomes easier and easier to keep being that which is the bodiless observer. Uh, and, and that's the truth. When you're in the observer of the body, the detached observer, you are not the body. The body is just like a table and it's got nothing to do with what you are. Okay, the next big one. Let's go to the biggies first. Thoughts probably one of the worst addictions to um, create limitation and separation thinking so again am i my thoughts or am i the witnesser of thoughts 
It's very important to get clarity on this. Uh, do I want to be the thoughts? Well, thoughts are like limited things that flip by in consciousness, and then they're gone, and another stream of thoughts comes and goes. Well, okay, so they're, generally speaking, for most human beings, they're very, very meaningful and addictive and personal. Um, but, you know, is there an observer? Is there a watcher of thoughts? Is there something here that's not thoughts? So, again, I have to inquire. Am I these thoughts that seep popping in? Or is there something, is there a witnesser of the thoughts that's actually not the thoughts? And if there's a witnesser, is the witnesser enmeshed with the thoughts? Is it finding the thoughts important and getting affected by th the thoughts? Uh, is there a detached witnesser or a witnesser of the witnesser where um, these thoughts are seen to be clearly, they've got nothing to do with me. It's just like a table. And is there a witnesser where the thoughts are not important? Is there a or where there's no identification? And if there's no identification or an extremely detached observer that's not interested in even registering thoughts or identifying with thoughts, do the thoughts even exist any longer? So this is the process of inquiry. Okay, some of the tricks of the ego. I'm going to think about this. You can't think about this. This is a, this is an experiential process. Um, you, you, you cannot think your way to be the witnesser. That will never, ever work. Can you try and be the observer? You cannot try, because trying is observed. Have you know, what, what is trying? Trying is like, mm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and not be thinking. But who's, who's trying? I mean, that's like an energy of the ego that's trying. What's observing? So trying is like a table. What's observing the trying? trying to not think well the, the observer is not observing the trying and is the observer making an effort or trying no the observer just watches the trying is not interested in trying so there's an observer where trying doesn't exist or even ever existed or thinking ever existed can you get to the silence the watcher by trying and thinking about it no so it, it's a totally different dimension uh, to uh, th even try, you can never ever think your way into the observer. Never. That's the thing of um, one of my teachers, the self inquiry teachers that I met. He said, you know, like there is no thought that will ever be meaningful to you. If you have a, one thought within your ego that's meaningful, then you always go back. It'll hook you in again and again to that one thought, a special thought. You know, so you got to let go of thoughts for good. There's never, ever going to be another thought in your life that's going to be useful. So forget it. Uh, the, uh, once you get that, you realize it's like, it will be like telling an alcoholic, like, there's nothing ever for you ever again, another glass of alcohol. Just completely forget about it. You'll never get another piece of goodness out of it. It was absolutely poison for you. Forget it. Uh, you know, don't, don't rationalize going back there. So once you get that, then letting the, the alcohol go, letting the thoughts go, it's like, well, I can start thinking again, but it's like, you know, do I want to beat myself up? You know, why would I want to do that? So I'd only go back if I think there's something good there. I want to, I want to beat myself up with, with that. So, um, okay, so those are some of the tricks. Like, I'll think about, I'll think about the, observe. can I think, what about visualization? Maybe I'm telling people to visualize, but if I'm not telling people to think about being the observer, Am I asking them to do no? What what witnesses images and pictures? Is the witnesser of an image another image, or is is there a witnesser of all images? Is that that's not an image. I'm not talking about. I'm not telling people to visualize or think their way to the observer, or the silence, or the timelessness, or the the infinite, or the oneness. You see. So those are some of the tricks that the ego tries to do. Like, I'll think about being the observer. Well, no. Um, the witnesser of thoughts uh, to to be the witnesser of thoughts it's like an aha recognition when you realize you're the watcher of the body and the and the detached watcher of the thoughts you can never ever think your way there you cannot trying is of the ego focusing is of the ego uh, uh, interested gaze is of the ego these things aren't of the truth that's the all ego stuff and that stuff is there's a watcher of that stuff and there's a detached watch of all of this ego stuff where this stuff no longer registers or exists. Okay, so so those are, those are the two biggies to start with. 
am I the body? Well, find make be clear on a table. Are you the table in the room? You're not the table in the room. Now, inquire, are you the body? Are you the observer? You can't, uh, and once once you get the aha of being the observer of the body, then it becomes easier not to be the body or to believe you're the body. Then the thoughts. Okay, the next one, you can do now the subtle stuff. The subtle stuff is time. So time and location and noise. These are some of the more subtle ones to let go of. So time, what, well, time only exists because something is interested in time and wanting to register time. So what's the observer of time? Is there a detached observer or uninterested observer in time? Keep doing that and you realize there's an observer which isn't interested in time and then time ceases, it becomes timeless. What about location? Like if I say something like, hey guys, where are you located in the room? Are you located over there or here or there? Yeah, I'm located here and I'm located over there. Well, okay, but what's observing the sense of location? Is there an observer of location? Is there a detached observer of location that's not interested in location? And then you, uh, the experience will be then you're out of location. Uh, oneness or the infinite or the silence is not located anywhere. Um, it's not in time. It doesn't suffer time. Time is being limited. You don't want to be limited by time. Do you want to be limited to being a body or a thinker or a visualizer or a, or, or or stuck in a location? It sounds a bit limited to me. Um, so uh, what about, okay, so you can inquire into, am I location? Am I a location? Am I time? Am I thought? Am I body? The last one uh, I can remember for the time being is the trap of noise and sound. You know, like people will tell me like the noisy neighbors. Oh my God, the noisy neighbors. <laughs> noisy neighbors that's a good one uh, uh, the na the sounds are distracting me you know the neighbors distracting me that's a big one it is a big one actually sound, sound is actually one of the funny ones um well again who okay i am being disturbed by the noise upstairs okay all right there's a me that's upset and hearing noises and the noises are too loud well, okay Okay, what's observing the me that's being disturbed by the noises? Is there a watcher of the me that's disturbed by the noises? Uh, yes, yes, there is an observer of the me. And is there an observer of noise? Is there a detached observer of noise? Is there a witnessing uh, that doesn't even want to register or pick up noise? Is there a witnesser where noise does not exist and where I don't exist? So keep doing that. And suddenly you will detach from the you that's upset by noise and from noise. Uh, I do that sometimes and the noise starts to, if if you're lucky and you pray for a miracle, the noise starts to disappear. And, and you, I've had, actually not very often, uh, it's called the, the hush of heaven, where I'm walking across a busy street, which would normally be full of noises and distractions. And it's all silent and just like a muffled heavenly clouds with you, just silent blotting out the world so you can't hear anything. So actually noise doesn't exist. The body doesn't exist. Thoughts don't exist. The deeper you go into the infinite, none of that stuff exists. Okay, so I hope that was kind of supposed to be a beginner's guide to self-inquiry. The key to that, the very first step, how do you know that you're not the table in the room? And if you're the detached observer, you're a detached observer. It's a meaningless object. It's got nothing to do. You're not identified with it. Actually, you're not the body, you're not your thoughts. These are all objects. Another way to say it is, is anything that's transitory and that can pass, can that be you? Ah, that, I forgot one, didn't I? I forgot feelings, like foggy feelings and tiredness and, and illnesses and pain. I forgot that one. Okay. Well, the same thing, you know, so the thing with like pain and foggy brain and, um, and uh, all that stuff and guilt and shame is, am I the, are those feelings me? Or is there an observer of these feelings, these thoughts, and this fog, and this tiredness, and this pain, and this guilt, and this whatever it is? So you realize with all of these things like pain, guilt, shame, foggy feeling, uh, um, burning sensations, that they come and go. And if they come and go, and they get louder and softer, and all kinds of things, and they're located in places, and all kinds of things in the body, or whatever, well, if, so this stuff is coming and going and it's passing and it's changing. 
but is there an observer of this stuff? If something can come and go, is there a watcher of the thing coming and going and changing? And uh, if there is, am I the pain? And if I am being affected by the pain or the foggy brain or whatever it is, but is there a watcher of the fog or the pain? Is there a detached watcher of the foggy brain? So uh, at a certain point, there comes a recognition. It's like, a aha, ah, yes, the observer. There is an observer. And once you're the observer, suddenly it no longer hits you and it starts to disappear. Um, an interesting thing, I just want to end, I didn't end on this, otherwise I'll be talking for too long. Um, like Hawkins talked about general anesthetic. It was very, very interesting. And he said, like, you know, like you, you, you take the magical cure, like they put the needle in your vein full of the general anesthetic and then the whole world disappears. But actually, he said that can be that's actually can be done by that can actually be done by um, spiritual work. You see, you can actually make the whole world disappear and pain disappear if you go into the infinite, infinite witnessing. And that's actually true. I've actually had that. Um, so I was, this is a true story. Um, one of my true stories. Um, <laughs> I don't laugh at that one. But anyway, um, so I was into, I was very much into um, not taking painkillers for one phase. And I had to go in for um, a kidney transplant operation. And, uh, and I was thinking like, I, I should say, like, I don't want the general anesthetic. Um, but in the end, I didn't. I didn't say that. I knew that I wouldn't do that, and I chickened out of that. But I said after that, they wanted to give me a morphine pump, so I can just press this pump and get as much morphine. I said to them, "Forget giving me the morphine pump, but please don't give me any painkillers after the transplant operation. Uh, I refuse it all." Uh, they were actually. Um, they looked at me like I was a nutcase, but they actually did try and they did do my thing. I didn't use the morphine pump. I, I told them not. to give me any painkillers whatsoever in my medication and the pain was excruciating I was doing the Lord's Prayer and eventually I just thought I'm going to listen to my spiritual teacher on self-inquiry and being the observer of whatever I think I am uh, being the observer of the pain and in a split second I was just looking like, well, what's observing the pain what's observing me in pain in a split second I was fast asleep you know without any painkillers so that is that is the miraculous um so in my experience, it happens. But if you can't be the observer, then there was a lot of pain. <laughs> I'll stop on that.